You're very welcome to be out in the cottage. This is down on the Shannon in Carrick, my local town. Some very eerie noises. But at the end of this little clip, I'll show you how to make those Christmas decorations I promised. Okay, here we go. This is modelling clay that I've rolled out with a rolling pin. The modelling clay can be got in any art shop. This one is called DAS. Air hardening. You see that on there? Air hardening. Now it does last a very long time if it's wrapped up properly and not allowed to dry out. So you cut a piece off. It's a bit like cutting a block of cheese. Cut a piece off with a sharp knife, set it on your table. I'm putting it on the oil cloth here because that helps it to not to stick. And um, roll it out. So I've got two little hearts in here already. Now you can just leave them to dry, air dry, or you can put them into a very, very low, low oven. As low as you can go. Air drying is fine. The little patterns on the top can be created using anything like this. This is my ring and it has a raised spiral. So you literally, let me just <coughs> do this one here. Just gently roll it. Okay, and what you can do is actually roll out these spirals first, like that, and then you can cut your shapes, or you can cut your shapes and then roll them out. Now I've gently embossed on both sides. So anything at all which is raised. So have a, have a scar through your jewellery box, through uh, your sewing basket. You can use little beads, you know, anything at all like that. Only limited by your own imagination, as I've often said. Now the table is upside down because I've been making biscuits today with my two youngest grandsons. And we used exactly the same method we rolled out our um, biscuit dough which we made biscuit dough is very simple it's just a case of um, caster sugar margarine or butter plain flour corn flour that's basically it um, and you can get these recipes all over the internet so the recipe that I use is just a very simple one and you can get similar ones, like I say, all over the internet and on YouTube. So I made biscuits earlier on using exactly the same technique. Rolled out the biscuit dough. We cut them out with all kinds of cutters. So we've got, let me just put these in. I invested in these years ago when I was doing quite a lot of artwork with children, you know, when I was teaching. And uh, they're invaluable, really. Invaluable. These are the little stars. And I've got lots of others, but today I'm just going to be using the stars and the hearts. So, and then um, you make the little hole to put your ribbon through. I use a little plastic straw. Yes, there is a use for plastic straws, and this one I've kept around in my cupboard <laughs> for ages. So it's just a matter of doing that there. 
twisting it a little bit. And there we go. So, <clears throat> this is one I made earlier. Um, I want to show you something else. I want to show you the actual way in which I get this lovely glass. Bear with me. Okay, if you want to embellish the ornament, so in this case I've got a little star, I've cut out a little star, and that's going to go on the top there. Um, okay, so you just put a little bit of water on the back of the clay and stick it on to the heart. Just a little, literally just, you know, almost like a lick of water. Um, and then you have this lovely raised effect. So I'm going to do that just now. Now, I paint the finished hearts and stars using watercolour. I also use, um, you know, you can use gold pens and silver pens. You know, go into a little art shop or a little pound shop and you'll be able to find all kinds of children's craft materials. And this is really what you're looking for. Keep it very simple. Now, I went into Q2 in Carrick yesterday and um, I got this for 150 in the children's section. It's gloss glue, sealer, let me just say, sealer and finisher with super luster. So I'll get a nice kind of shininess on there. Now you can also, uh, you don't really want to be spraying these with gold paint, but a little knack that I've found is to take a little bit of tissue, spray a little gold, bit of gold paint onto the tissue, just a bit, and then just wipe it over the surface of the paint that you've already put on there. So I, I use shades of pink and purple and then I just wiped it over with a little bit of uh, gold paint on a tissue. And again, you know, the gold paint is quite cheap. You can get the spray tins for a couple of euro. Um, you can also get little, little bottles of gold ink, etc. You know, just again, look around, see what you have and experiment a little bit. I always, always say it's only ever limited by your own imagination. So, there we go. Okay, so I've got two, four, six, seven done. And I'm pretty pleased with those. And there's a little star that I just stuck onto that with a little bit of water. Almost like a little bit of spittle would do, you know. Now, tomorrow I shall be painting them. Again, I'm trying to do this with one hand. These are very simple watercolours. They're basically children's watercolours. So I'm just doing a little wash. Um, I'm using purple and blue. I'm cutting in around the edges as well, you can see. Now, I'm going to have to put this foam down in order to continue. But you can see basically what I'm using, just a very cheap set of children's watercolours and a basic brush, some water there in that cup. And uh, yeah, so I'll show you the next stage in a moment. Now, I'm doing a little bit of experimentation. I've got these um, pearl pens, brush markers. Again, they were in the children's section, reasonably priced, $7.95. And um, so I've been using the blue. You can see it's very pearlized. And uh, I've been using the purple. And I've been experimenting a little bit with the gold. But I may need to go for the gold a little bit more on this one. So I'm just seeing... All the, all the variations I can get with these colours. When I'm finished, I'm going to put a nice gloss on the top. So I'll continue now 
on these two and show you them when they're finished. Now the coat of gloss glue has just been applied. So I'm going to let that dry and sink in a bit and then show you the finished product. Well, I say product. It's not a product, is it? But I have to do the back. But I'll show you how it looks like um, once this is dry. Now, I've got three finished. Now, these two, the glue is still drying. So you see those little bits of white like milk? That's the glue. When it dries, it'll be completely transparent. This one, I haven't put glue on because I've used the, um, the pearlized pens in all, in, in all the design here, which is actually a much easier way to do it. But to get different effects, I think, can be very beautiful. And you can really experiment with your own creativity. So there we go. What do you think? Would you buy those in the shop? I think I would. <laughs> Though I say it myself. Blessings to you all. And enjoy your, your festive creativity. So this is the calendar, which is still available on the website. And the months of the year and the days of the week are in Irish. And all the Celtic festivals are marked out in it. And it's filled with photographs and some writing, some interesting little bits and pieces of writing. Okay. And this is the back of it. Even some writing and photographs on the back. Then I also have, let me just get these books lined up. My first book, A Cottage in Three Acres. Now this comes with, um, I think there's about 70 photographs in there. I know the calendar has between 50 and 60 or perhaps 70 photographs as well. But this details my journey from 2004, when I stumbled upon this little place, up until 2013. My second book, In Search of the Goddess Rising, this is very much inspired by living in the west of Ireland, because Ireland has a very female identity. We call it Mother Ireland. And this is all about the goddess and the culture here, and the way in which the landscape and our thoughts on life and, and our thoughts on family are all influenced by the goddess culture. Ireland was even named after one of the beautiful goddesses. This third book explores my journey over the past 18 and a half, getting on for 19 years. Walking Between Worlds is an exploration of this world and the other world. And again, Lots of images in it, um, delving, weaving, going right across, you know, um, the warp, the warp in the weft, looking at the she, the fairy world, the other world, the influence of the Celts, the influence of um, all that is seen and unseen, especially the unseen, you know, there's a great depth of spiritual exploration in this and bringing us right up to you know the modern day and ufos did you know that there was a recording i say a recording because it was translated from the ancient irish of um what could only be a ufo back in the 11th century here in ireland hmm. much much to talk about and to think about there and this little booklet, The Beyond in the Cottage Guide to the Deep Midwinter, it has got recipes, it's got photographs, it's got some little stories, it's got all things pertaining to the beautiful, enchanting Deep Midwinter. All available on the website and the links are to be found under every video. A little view of Beelton Cottage when I first bought the cottage. And this was the land looking up from the road and the land looking down 
from the cottage. Blessings to you all.